As we all know now, Carlos Sainz will have to make way for Lewis Hamilton at the end of this season. The Spaniard must therefore look for a new seat. With Fernando Alonso committing his future to Aston Martin, there are few good seats open for the 2025 season. With the big teams almost sorted already, the focus shifts to the smaller teams. Mercedes could be a possibility for Sainz, but if Max Verstappen cannot be roped in, Andrea Kimi Antonelli seems to be the main candidate there. Sainz faces the possibility of being without a race seat in 2025. While Sainz has delivered some of the best performances of his career so far, he is not any closer to securing his place on the grid. He is farther away than he was in Australia because Alonso has now signed a multi-year contract extension with Aston Martin, closing that door shut for Sainz. With fewer options remaining, Sainz needs to maximize every single weekend and keep beating his teammates to force Red Bull and Mercedes to take him seriously. And he doesn't have the whole season to do that because those teams can announce their second drivers anytime now. After his win in Australia, Sainz was looking in a strong position with Christian Horner showing interest in him for the second Red Bull seat. However, with Perez finishing second behind Verstappen in three out of four races so far, he might just convince Red Bull to extend his contract. After all, Horner has said multiple times that the seat is Checo's to lose. And if Checo can help the team win both championships with ease, there is no need for Red Bull to consider Sainz. And it's the exact opposite of Mercedes. Sainz might not want to go there because Toto Wolff is only looking for a short-term driver as he wants to get the Mercedes prodigy, Kimi Antonelli, into the team as soon as possible. And that's exactly why the former Ferrari boss, Peter Windsor, has said that Sainz should take a year off from the sport instead of going to a midfield team if he does have to sort of write off 2025 in a way that would be a good year for him to sort of rebuild his style a little bit and just capitalize on everything he's just done. A company like Audi are not going to come into F1 half-baked, so they could be offering Carlos a huge amount to go to what is Sauber at the moment, but will be Audi eventually. There's so many question marks about what will happen with Mercedes, with Red Bull, so I think that it is just up to Carlos to decide if he wants to join either Audi or wait and see if there's anything opening up. We are in the silly season in April, basically. It's happening four months too early. However, F1 pundit Karun Chandok has cast doubt on whether a move to Audi would be the wisest decision for the Spanish driver. On the latest episode of the Sky Sports F1 podcast, Chandok offered his thoughts on Sainz's situation and the possibility of a year out. We've seen drivers take a year out because they didn't get the seat they wanted, but they were the ones who had already won their championships and had nothing to prove. Prost, Lauda, and Mansell, they went off to do other things, or in Prost's case, he took a year out, signed his contract early with Williams, knew he was going to come back and win a championship. In Carlos's case, he's at a different stage of his life, a different stage of his career. He's yet to get that championship run, that chance to challenge for the championship, let alone win one. So I think it's not something he'd be looking at doing at this stage of his life. Audi got tremendous funding, backing and have poured a lot of money into this project already and will continue to do so. F1 is tough. If you arrive in 26, I'd say it's at least three seasons before you start to really start punching at the sharp end. For Carlos, he'll be 30 next year. Does he want to spend his prime building a project which may or may not pay dividends? Probably not. F1 reports say Sainz wants a deal of at least two seasons with Mercedes, with the possibility of another year's extension. However, Mercedes would like to offer Sainz a one-year contract so that the team can retain the option to sign Antonelli when he is ready for Formula One. Wolf will not want to make the same mistake that he did with Verstappen and leave Antonelli in the wild for too long. The ideal scenario would be to give him a year at Williams and then progress him to Mercedes, where he can be nurtured into something brilliant. Antonelli is the 17-year-old whose emergence is being compared to Max Verstappen's prodigious rise and who is believed to be the favorite to replace Hamilton. It might be a name you're set to see more of even as soon as 2025 as Mercedes' apparent willingness to let other top drivers sign for different teams uncontested. While it waits to evaluate Antonelli's F2 season with Prima Racing, appears to have put him in pole position to fill Hamilton's boots. Off the back of winning the Formula Regional European Championship, Mercedes sent the 17-year-old Italian to Formula 2, skipping Formula 3 with the next stage of his Formula 1 preparation to now begin as he gets behind the wheel of a Formula 1 car for the first time. 
With Antonelli starting to find his feet in F2, scoring a best result yet, of P4 last time out in the Australia feature race, now he will experience another leap in performance at his disposal. For his first experience at the wheel of a Formula One car, Antonelli will head to a venue very familiar to the series in the form of the Red Bull Ring, host of the Austrian Grand Prix. This event returned to the Formula One schedule back in 2014, with an Austrian Grand Prix having been held every year since, as Antonelli now readies to tackle the high-speed, 10-turn Red Bull Ring. However, Antonelli will not be driving the W14 or W13. Instead, he will drive the W12, with which Mercedes scored their eighth and final Constructors' championship victory in that record-breaking run of dominance. Mercedes have struggled to master the ground effect era, with Red Bull having instead established dominance. So Wolf wants Antonelli to feel what a really good car looks like in his first outing. The test is going to be there with a 2021 car. We want to give him the feeling of what a really good car looks like. Asked if Mercedes' struggles in recent years makes Antonelli a more attractive option thanks to a lack of pressure on him to fight for race wins from the start, Wolf replied, I think you can look at it from various perspectives. I believe we are in a rebuilding phase. We need to acknowledge that three years into these regulations, we've got to do things differently than we've done in the past, without throwing overboard what we believe is goodness in the way we operate. And rebuild a good team, we could put a young driver in, give him an opportunity with less pressure and fighting for victories immediately, or put a more experienced driver in the car that can help us dig ourselves out of the current performance. Sainz was the only non-Red Bull driver to win a race last season, and became the only one to do so this year, when he led teammate Leclerc in a Ferrari 1-2 in Australia, just two weeks on from undergoing an appendectomy that ruled him out of the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. With three podiums from the, the three races he has featured in, Sainz has delivered the perfect response to being deemed to surplus to requirements by Ferrari, and left the likes of Horner and Wolf with little option but to take notice. Reports claim that Audi would like to have Sainz in place for 2025, but that would almost certainly result in Sainz taking a major step backwards in terms of competitiveness, which conflicts with his stated desire to remain in a winning car. I have no clue where I will be next year. It's true we're talking to many teams. I just need to keep focused on what I'm doing, prove to myself and everyone that when I'm given a fast car, I maximize what I'm given and I deliver. So, where do you think Sainz will end up in 2025? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest F1 news.